Kalvoal, Terhi Koskinen here. I'm really happy to be a part of All and Create International Tournament of Arts and Crafts 2017 and I will add a link um, to this video so you can see and learn what it's all about. But this is my process video for the um, spot <laughs> I filled with this design and I hope you enjoy. Uh, I'm starting with white cardstock and some Vicky Bowden paints from American Crafts uh, and I'm just dropping few little drops of uh, each color I want to have and then I'm going to roll it over the white cardstock. Uh, as you see there's this circle shaped um, uh, cut <laughs> in this paper but it didn't um, cut it through because I used my silhouette for the first time with this layout and I didn't know how to use it actually uh, well um, that good that I wanted to so that's why it's not <laughs> cut it perfectly but I didn't mind I still want to use this and actually I learned a lot by doing this way because um, this rolling technique what I'm doing right now will work much better when you do it to the paper um, before you got it um, with your silhouette or any other machine and also I don't want to put any painted papers to my silhouette because I have a new plate and I don't want to ruin that so this is how I do it I'm just uh, painting it first then I'm trying it and then I'm cutting it off and once the paint is dry, I'm still not cutting it, I'm using some All and Create exclusive stamps, which um, are really beautiful. I'm using these text stamps and then some flowers. I'm going randomly through all the page because um, later I will cut this uh, dream catcher thing off here and then you can see how beautiful details the embossing powder will do with the stamp and also the paint I did will go randomly all over so it's really really beautiful I think. I really like the way that um, I'm using this embossing technique before it's, um, the paper is cut because it's much easier um, but also it's really hard work to cut it off the beautiful shape um, after the embossing because you really have to cut it and you can't do it with scissors because the patterns are so small so I used a craft knife to do it it was a lot of work but I don't mind actually this is the thing I love doing crafts so I really didn't mind but as you see, the gold embossing powder is really looking good already. And now I'm starting to cut it piece by piece and line by line with a craft knife. Uh, and I'm going to do it from the back side because then uh, on the right side it will look much much better. At least I think so. <laughs> and it took well quite a long, like an hour or so, to cut it through, but I have it and as you see, it's really cool. You can see it paint over there and you can see the embossing over there, but still it's looking good. Especially on the feathers, because there's a lot, lot, lots of a larger piece of paper with the feathers, so it really looks good. And now I'm going to create the cream catcher thing. Uh, at this point I must say that the photograph I'm doing is my parents, they have their fourth, fourth, fifth, well, how to say? Anyway, they have been married for 40 years, <laughs> that was the good way to say it. So they are celebrating really hard and we had this amazing, uh, really beautiful summer day and we celebrated their marriage. I really hope um, uh, that I and uh, together with my husband we can celebrate ours in 30 years. Actually this month we will be 
10 years together married so it's kind of golden but anyway I wanted to do this dream catcher thing for my parents because my mom loves dream catchers and they are kind of dream catchers if you think because they had a dream to be together for many many years and now they have been so they catch their dream ha go and figure yeah anyway I just added some thread some really thick thread it's a golden golden thread um, to the dream catcher to kind of starting the texture I want to have lots of lots of uh, lace and um, other um, cloth like cheese cloth or something fabric and of course thread um, and I started it with adding it to the dream catcher circle I had some die cuts and lots of paper pieces uh, these are all picked up randomly they are all leftovers uh, I didn't cut much uh, for this layout because I had so many beautiful papers in my trash <laughs> so I just took it from there and now I'm using a stapler to put it them all together uh, I'm leaving this uh, leaf uh, die cut on top because I want to have some kind of um, patterns going on again it would look kind of stupid to add the uh, very square papers and very triangle shaped papers to the dream catcher layout because it's all about uh, not going messy but going really airy so that's why I'm doing this way and now I'm actually using some metal elements I have in my trash uh, I never knew I would add them on a layout because <laughs> usually I'm doing so simple and unlayered well yes layered but on un unmetallic <laughs> layouts so now I add some beautiful metal um, feathers for this layout and I'm doing it with thread um, and as I didn't have thick thread in other colors and uh, white I decided to go do my own thick thread with <laughs> smaller one or thinner one and I just roll it in my hands and then it goes um, fatter I don't know which is the right word but anyway you can see on the video how I'm doing it and now I'm going to add the beautiful die cut uh, feathers too. And as the background is really white, as you can see, I decided to uh, kind of smooth the uh, line between the dream catcher, the feathers and the white cardstock by stamping to the white cardstock. And I'm going to use the same stamps I have um, on the dream catcher and I'm going to use the same gold embossing, uh, <laughs> embossing powder I have in the dream catcher. This way it will look smooth and it will look beautiful. And I really like to repeat the same techniques uh, on the same layout and other uh, layers it will kind of give some rhythm and well it just looks good so as you can see there's something on the background but I'm not happy to it just this way so I'm adding some pencil circles just to add some shades and something on the background and still I wasn't happy with this so I added some uh, texture paste which was actually from Heidi Swap uh, silver paste uh, through the stencil which is from Prima I think it's really old stencil but it's one of my favorite ones because it's so versatile you can use it to the <laughs> layouts like this but then again you can use it to anything so that's why I chose that and now I have some nice textures and patterns on the background too and everything on top of it will look just perfect and as I want to have 
lots of layers and I want to make this layout really thick it will end up to the wall I think so I want to have it kind of really shabby shape vintage look at least in my point of view because usually all my things are really white anyway I'm adding some thread and I'm adding the dream catcher with 3d foam uh, I'm also using glue just to make sure it will stick there because you never know if you hang the layout on the wall the gravity will do the thing that it will drop off if you don't have enough glue so I will make sure that there's enough glue and this tacky glue will uh, end up to be clear so it doesn't matter if it looks white right now it will stay good so that's the dream catcher part and then I'm adding all the feathers the paper feathers and then the metal feather, <laughs> the metal feathers, and then some leaves, of course, because you must have something pretty there. And leaves are good because I have some flowers stamped on the background. Now I'm struggling with the thread, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the knots and the messy look will kind of be part of it. And I really want to make sure these feathers are staying good, so I'm using some glue and 3D foam as well. As you can see, I added some cheese cloth too, and more thread. I'm using like tons and tons of thread, but it's good. Um, I will cut the cheese cloth that it looks like it's not put there, it's supposed to be there. So I'm tearing it apart and doing everything for that so it doesn't look like it looks now. And a small detail, I wanted to add the photograph in circle shaped because it fits better for the dream catcher and it really looks good that way. Not every photo looks good but my parents are in the photograph in the bushes and that it really, really looks good to have them there. They are hugging. Daddy is kissing mommy. So cool. Anyway, uh, then I'm finishing up the page with some mists and some embellishments and lots of, lots of things. And as we are in Dreamcatcher theme, I decided the arrows will look good there too. So I'm adding them. They are from Pink Paisley Cedar Lane line from last year and they are just so pretty. And now I'm gluing some leaves, so it looks even prettier. Um, and as the white cheesecloth is right now looking quite boring, uncolored, I decided to add some mists on top. You can do it with water watercolors if you prefer, or any other colors, liquid colors even inks, but I decided to add some some mists here and there and the uh, liquid color will soak up to the cheese clot, so it really looks funny. Uh, this splashing will add some some drops, but then I will add straight to the cheese clots too. These Altenew mists, which I'm using, are really strong when you add them, but when they are drying, they will go much, much uh, lighter tone. So I really love them. But this way, I'm adding some, some colors to the cheese clots and they will look much better. Um, anyway, I hope you are enjoyed by this tutorial. This is really simple layout, but then again, small of um, lots of small tricks and hacks how to do things simple and I really like to do mixed media layout so it was really fun and I hope you like it too um, now I'm going to give it to my mom and dad and I hope they are satisfied by their daughter's work thank you all for watching and have a nice day bye